there's a human rights and humanitarian crisis in Gaza as we speak and uh, one of the key things is that Israeli attacks on Gaza since the, confl the current conflict started on the 27th of December last year have uh, in many cases been disproportionate and uh, because of that uh, hundreds of civilians, hundreds of unarmed civilians have been killed. In some cases uh, their attacks have been deliberately against or appear to be deliberately against civilians and civilian buildings. Uh, what's more, there's a humanitarian crisis in, uh, in Gaza and uh, in many cases this means that people are, have nowhere to go, they've got nowhere to seek shelter, the borders are closed, uh, food stocks are, are running, uh, running thin and uh, medical supplies are an urgent, uh, you know, there's urgent need for medical supplies, hospitals lack basic necessities. Uh, then, on the other side, Palestinian armed groups have been firing indiscriminate rockets at uh, Israeli, uh, Israeli population centres in southern, southern Israel, and that's led to uh, at least three people being killed. Amnesty International has got a delegation on the ground in southern Israel at the moment. We don't have access to Gaza. We've asked the Israeli authorities for permission to enter. We haven't been given this. And we're in the same position as many other organisations, human rights, humanitarian organisations, and of course journalists. And that's a serious problem for people on the, uh, for independent reporting on the ground. And we're asking for immediate and unfettered access for all of those. What the picture nonetheless that's coming out, and we're in constant contact with people on the ground in Gaza, is, uh, is of a calamitous situation. And that's, on the f first of all, there are over 850 people in Gaza have been killed so far in the current conflict. Nearly half of those uh, are civilians, and uh, many of those are, uh, are, are, are women and children. Now, in addition, there's a terrible problem with uh, food supplies. And to give one example, uh, you know, there are something like, uh, during the three-hour lull, which is often broken in any case in, uh, in the days of fighting, there are sometimes three, uh, queues of 300 metres for, for bread. And often the people at the back of the queue never get to the front to actually buy the bread they need uh, when, because the, the fighting started by the time they get there. Uh, the situation in the hospitals is grim, to say the least. Uh, medical supplies aren't, uh, aren't getting there. And uh, what's clear is that uh, you know, el with the electricity supply so, uh, so problematic, the, and generators needed, there aren't enough, there isn't enough electricity to actually power the, the apparatus, the machines that are needed to keep people alive and as a result people are dying. Situation uh, that we've been following on the ground in southern Israel is where th three civilians have been killed by rocket fire fired from Gaza and uh, but over well at least some some 200 have, have been injured in those uh, in those rocket attacks as well. Another aspect of all of that is that uh, many people have been have left their homes and uh, just to take one, uh, one town, Ashkelon, where our delegation has visited, uh, it seems that some 40% of the town has left temporarily, uh, which is obviously a massive amount. Israel, Hamas and other Palestinian groups should immediately cease all attacks against civilians. They need to cease all disproportionate attacks which harm civilians and they need basically to abide by their obligations under international law. Amnesty believes that there is mounting evidence that both Israel and Palestinian groups have committed war crimes. Mounting evidence. And now on the Israeli side, uh, there have been a number of attacks which have taken place which appear to show signs of, of possible war crimes and if you take uh, you know, take, take just three. One was the case where incident where the Israeli uh, forces evacuated some 110 Palestinians into a house and then 24 hours later repeatedly shelled it and 30 people died as a result. Another incident is where the Israeli forces uh, targeted, it appears, a uh, center where there were un uh, civilian police uh, civilian police who were not taking part of the hostilities. That's another example. And thirdly, the, uh, the case in which the Israelis deliberately, uh, it appears, targeted the, uh, targeted the parliament in Gaza. That's, uh, for us, a civilian building 
and uh, should not have been targeted under international law. On the Palestinian side, Palestinian armed groups have fired indiscriminate rockets at Israeli towns and cities in the south of the country, and those appear to have been directed deliberately at Israeli population centres. Well, first of all, the UN Security Council has uh, issued a resolution calling for a ceasefire. It's also called for unfettered uh, humanitarian assistance to be getting into Gaza. Now, at the moment, that call is going unheeded. Uh, now, if it does continue to go unheeded, then what we're calling for is at least a humanitarian truce uh, by all sides, which will allow humanitarian aid to get in, humanitarian aid that is so needed in Gaza because of the situation there, because of the crisis on the ground. Uh, there is at the moment a three-hour lull, which is often broken in any case on an almost daily basis, but that is just simply not enough for people who are trapped in Gaza to get the assistance that they need. The international community needs to start taking steps already to address the longer term issues and uh, two of those issues are accountability and human rights monitors. First of all, there, are, there is mounting evidence of war crimes having been committed and it is essential that the international community ensures that a mechanism investigates those, that there's an independent and impartial investigation into those crimes or into the evidence of those crimes and that those who are responsible are held accountable. Secondly, there need to be monitors on the ground and the international community needs to work towards a situation where there are monitors who are able to uh, monitor what crimes are being committed on the ground, to monitor abuses of human rights and humanitarian, humanitarian law, and ensure, therefore, that the people, both in southern Israel and in Gaza, are protected in the future. Well, Amnesty International is calling for an arms embargo. Uh, we believe that uh, a comprehensive arms embargo should be imposed on all parties to the conflict, that's the Israelis, the Hamas and other Palestinian groups, until such time as it becomes clear that those parties are not using weapons uh, to commit uh, abuses of international humanitarian law.